So we have prepared our parts to Boolean. Let's make Booleans now. Now with the cube that we have made in the last video, let's go with a new way of modeling things known as Booleans. And we'll start by choosing this Boolean Unite. And there's a drop down where we can unite parts. In other words, we can turn two parts into one part. We can subtract parts. In other words, remove one part from another part and intersect parts. And that is to combine two parts and only keep the areas where they overlap. So Booleans basically consist of combining parts and creating new shapes. And that might be an abstract concept. So let's jump into a real example. I'm going to choose Boolean intersect and I'm going to input my sphere. So this is the sphere that we made in the last video. And you'll notice every time I click, I can add another sphere. So I can add as many of these parts as I'd like, although I'll use control Z and, uh, and uh, we'll just go to insert one here. I have the origin and when I hover my mouse over the origin, you'll see that origin symbol with the red dot in the middle. This tells me that I can take, I can align the part right on my origin. So the origin of my sphere will line up with the origin of this environment. And that's what I'm after. So I'll click. And now I know my sphere is perfectly centered with my cube. So we have two bodies that are occupying the same space. We have a sphere inside of a cube. And what I'm going to do is tell a Libre that wherever these bodies intersect, we want to keep material. And wherever the bodies do not intersect, we want to remove material. So when I click the green check, we will operate that. And just like that, we have performed a Boolean intersect. That's my personal favorite kind of Boolean. I think it's the most interesting. But let's continue to create a part now. Uh, I'll go ahead and create a new part. And I'll choose Boolean Unite in my blank part. And I'll import a cylinder. And I can align that right on the origin. Right? And then I can continue to click and I'm going to add two more. You'll notice that I can click and drag so that I'm no longer on the origin. I'll hit Control Z. And when we have a part where we like it, we can always right click and choose Anchor Part. And now we won't move. From here, I want this to be on my Y axis. How do I do that? Well, we can use things known as constraints. I'll choose constraint. And I, here I have my round cylinder face and I have these options for constraints that are grayed out until I select certain things. So I'll select my Y axis here. And you'll notice that we have now the option to choose a coaxial constraint. In other words, I want the round face, which has an axis, to be aligned with the axis that I have selected, the Y axis. And by aligning the two axes, I now am constraining the uh, placement of the part to be here. I also can choose angle if I'd like them to be, say, 45 degrees off or something like that. But I'd need to add more constraints to make that angle meaningful. So we'll go with coaxial. Now, I can only move up and down the axis that I'm coaxial to. And so, I'll select this face and this plane. And you'll notice we get a coincident constraint. And this constraint means the face that I've selected will be coplanar with the, fa with the other face that I selected, or in this case, the plane that I selected. So the edge of this uh, rod here is right on this plane. But we want it to be offset. So we'll choose this offset option. And we'll offset at a distance of negative 2.5, just like that. Next, I can choose this circular face. And even from the tree, I can choose my x-axis. And we'll say OK to that. And again, we have the same thing, which I can easily give this a constraint and offset negative 2.5. So we've made some kind of jack or star and I'll go ahead and click the check. And now we've made this into one single solid and all the intersections are things that we can fill it or whatever we'd like to do. I'll go ahead and save this. I'll, I'll call it a jack. 
So we can run back to our previous part now, and I can choose Boolean Subtract. We just done a Boolean Unite, and to create this, we did a Boolean Intersect. Let's do Subtract to cover all three functions. And I'll import the Jack that I just Booleaned together. And I can hover over the origin to place this in the middle, or if I'd prefer, I can also use constraints to place this properly. As before, we can choose our select, we can choose our circular faces, just like that, to properly apply this. And then I click the green check and a subtraction is performed. So we can make interesting geometry from basic shapes using Boolean. And uh, Boolean is useful in many ways, like uh, creating injection molds or things of that nature. And that's how we do Booleans. And now coming up, let's do a large project that has a lot of the skills that we've learned along the way.